Greetings, Unsettled Souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, and I want to give my usual now every installment shout out about the charity connection, Dana Mobley Christ. Uh, she is somebody who is very, very sick who uh, has been a charity help for many, many, many people. Also, want to give a shout out to Big Brothers and Sisters. That is for Matt Winklejohn. All right. No surprise here. Uh, I've been talking about this for a while. CBS News. 14 arrested after large disturbance of teens gathers in center city Philadelphia. And I will let you know how this ties into what I've been saying about guns and why uh, so-called assault weapons are needed by the average person. You're going to see how this ties together. It happened again as soon as the warm weather hit, a large group of students in Center City caused a ruckus, endangered themselves and others. I hate CBS because it always refreshes the page with ads when you're trying to read it. If you hate getting a story from here. Alright, there it goes. And endangered themselves, police and pedestrians. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office has charged 10 juveniles with conspiracy, obstructing highways, failure to disperse, and disorderly conduct. All 10 defendants are scheduled for a detention hearing on Wednesday, it says. Um, according to authorities, 11 males and 3 females were arrested, all of them teens. The reason this matters is there's all these reports of groups of teenagers and groups of, uh, groups of anyone. I mean, I'm not one of these people that think, oh, the teens are going to send us all to hell. I'm not really a big fan of that. Um, I think there's idiots of all ages and idiots, regardless of their age, color, or creed, do these sorts of things. They get in large groups and they start threatening and harassing people in a, in a mob mentality. Now... If someone is coming to your home, let's say, uh, I don't know, pick a disaster. Pick, pick any disaster you think could happen. Um, do you live near a nuclear power plant? Do you live near a place with lots of earthquakes? Um, and do you live during, in a place like Detroit, which sees lots of gang violence anyway? Now, if something would trigger a large group of people to, say, 30 people decide to rob a rich white person's house, or let's say a whole mob of people decide to rob one business that's perceived as doing well, like a jewelry store. Do you want a pea shooter or a musket? Or do you want a gun that might be able to shoot a large number of people that are storming their way through your doors? Because unfortunately, all that is what outsourcing and poverty has brought our country to. Um, real quick, I want to get to this. Paul Joseph Watson, U.S.-backed FSA rebels decapitate and grill victims. It's always Michael Savage that talks about radical Islam as the religion of peace. Well, the religion of peace has now beheaded a man and grilled his head. A gruesome new photograph has emerged of U.S.-backed FSA rebels grilling a decapitated head of one of their victims. Another chilling example of how the Obama administration is supporting bloodthirsty terrorists in Syria. For those of you that do not know, Syria is run by a piece of human filth. The people that are fighting this piece of human filth are themselves pieces of human filth. They are tied to Al-Qaeda and they are tied to other terrorist networks in the area and we are funding them in order to destabilize the reason, but in doing the area. But in doing so, with that reasoning, what we're doing is enabling people who do things like this. According to SyriaNews.cc, on Thursday, April 11, 2013, a Syrian army helicopter transporting food supplies to villages and army units besieged around Marat, Norman City, in Idlib province when it was attacked by NATO's best assets, Al-Qaeda FSA terrorists, not with chance, of course, calling for a better election law, but with latest weapons provided covertly and openly by their sponsors, and the plane was down. On board eight officers and soldiers, the terrorists rushed to the site of the downed helicopter, decapitated the pilots, and grilled them. What's the solution to this? The solution to this is leaving the area. Leaving it. Go. Get 
go there. You have animals on both sides, and I am a World War II buff. Okay, I follow in World War I to some degree. Um, the reason Adolf Hitler was allowed to ascend to power such as he did was because the communists were sick, bloodthirsty monsters who were slaughtering hundreds of thousands of their own people. So when Adolf Hitler and the Nazis came to uh, uh, Austria, for instance, they were greeted as, as liberators. And of course, the Nazis did the same thing. That is happening today, right now, in Syria. There are bloodthirsty scum running the country, and there are bloodthirsty scum trying to overthrow the current scum. Leave. Leave. We can't do any good there, no matter which side we support. We have enough oil here if we just get the Greenpeace weenies to shut up. We drill our own oil, and we leave this crazy barbarian tendencies to do what they do, which is kill each other. And I'm not calling the Arab people stupid. They invented algebra. Islam, in my opinion, and I don't care what, you, what your opinion is, you're more than welcome to have it. I think it's a very restrictive religion as it is practiced in many forms. And one of those forms are over there fighting each other, and they're not a form that either side of us should be supporting. All we've done is get a lot of innocent people caught in the middle of this. These animals, and I mean animals in terms of what they believe, not their skin color or their mentality. If these animals want to kill each other, then let them. Neither one of them are a friend of America, so why are we there? Um, and this is Reuters. Climate scientists struggle to explain warming slowdown. Well, after Chinagate, I don't know how they could possibly be struggling. I can tell you why, because man-made global warming is a lie. Scientists are struggling to explain a slowdown in climate change that has exposed gaps in their understanding and defies a rise in global greenhouse gas emissions. Often focused on century-long trends, most climate models fail to predict that the temperature rise would slow starting around 2000. Well, if you had been listening to a lot of the lunatics on the right, you would have known this a long time ago. Scientists are now intent on figuring out the causes and determining whether the respite will be brief or a more lasting phenomenon. Getting this right is essential for the short and long-term planning of governments and businesses ranging from energy to construction, from agriculture to insurance. Many scientists say that they expect a revival of warming in the coming years. Yeah, that means that, you know, we're expecting it to happen, even though we base this on a lie so that we could raise your taxes and limit your country's growth. And if you don't believe it, go back to the idiots that were in my first article. Theories for the pause include that deep oceans have taken up more heat with the result that the surface is cooler than expected, and that industrial pollution in Asia or clouds are blocking the sun, or that greenhouse gases trap less heat than previously believed. We have known for a long time that the latter is true. Weak economic growth and the pause in warming is undermining government's willingness to take a rapid billion dollar shift from fossil fuels. Almost 200 governments have agreed to work on a plan by the end of 2015 to combat global warming. That means they know it's fake. They are setting it up so that these taxes can already be in place before the house of cards start falling down. But as long as you guys are out there like I am exposing this, then it won't happen. The climate system is not quite so simple as people thought. Oh, but the economic system can be manipulated, so said Bjorn Lomborg, a Danish statistician and author of The Skeptical Environmentalist, who estimates that moderate warming will be beneficial for crop growth and human health. Yes, indeed. They have known this for a very, very long time. It's a lie, people. It's coming out time and time and time again. Man simply is not warming the planet. And I've said a billion times, if you want to make the argument that we need to get these uh, gas emissions out of the air because it is giving us lung cancer, I'll listen to you. But if you're going to tell me that it's warming the planet, I'll listen to you while I'm sizing you for a straitjacket or a dunce cap. And I've been known.